Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Dread Time Stories. I'm your host, Dr. Phobia. And tonight, dear patients, a couple of things real quick before we begin tonight's reading. First and foremost, I actually had a catastrophic failure as far as my network at, at my house is concerned. I had to have brand new lines run through the house. But it's all behind me. It's all taken care of. I'm sorry it's taken me this long to get you guys a video. But I hope you will enjoy tonight's. It's actually pretty special. On to the second piece. This one is a major, major travesty. So there is a podcast that I've supported for a while now called the Brohio Podcast. They are a horror comedy podcast. They actually do live stream on YouTube as well. Apparently their home studio was actually broken into and all of their things for the studio were stolen. They have caught the perpetrator, but it's going to take them some time to get back on their feet. So if you enjoy the horror genre, don't mind laughing a little bit as well. Please go show your support to the Brohio podcast, whether it be on YouTube or on Spotify. I'll leave the links to both in the description below. Now finally, on to the meat and potatoes of tonight's reading. I feel like such a complete doofus because I run a channel known as Dr. Phobia's Dread Time Stories, and I've never done an episode on phobias. So tonight, dear patients, I'm issuing you a trigger warning because some of you very well may have these phobias. And we are not here to make fun of those in any shape or form. We are here to talk about them and get them out on the table. Honestly, I'm going to start making these videos about once a month, so I hope you guys will enjoy it tonight as well into the future. We'll be covering common phobias, not so common phobias, and everything else in between. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and let's dive headfirst into tonight's five phobias. Number one tonight is arachnophobia. Now, technically, some people think it's just the fear of spiders, but in actuality, it is the fear of all arachnids. I actually know people who are deathly afraid of ticks and deathly afraid of scorpions, which also fall into that category. So as previously stated, arachnophobia is the fear of spiders that goes beyond the desire to kill one when you see it in your home. People with arachnophobia will become extremely anxious at the sight of a spider, usually jumping, screaming, or freezing in place. These reactions can sometimes be invoked by the mere picture of a spider, which I hope each and every one of you are taking a look at in the background. And be careful of that one on your thigh. I'm just kidding. Arachnophobia affects 30.5% of all people in the United States. People with arachnophobia will avoid places where spiders might be found at all cost. This often means not participating in outdoor activities, such as camping or hiking. They will refuse to come within close proximity of spiders, especially not getting close enough to kill them or remove them from their home. They will often require help from another person to do so. This phobia is thought to be developed from an innate fear that spiders are venomous, which would result in negative effects or even death if bitten. Number two on our list is ophidophobia, the fear of snakes. Ophidophobia is the fear of snakes. This can sometimes be confused with herfetophobia, which is the fear of reptiles in general. But people with ophidophobia are specifically afraid of snakes. They will be startled by the sight of a snake, oftentimes jumping, screaming, or crying. Similar to arachnophobia, people with ophidophobia will avoid places where snakes may be found and avoid participating in outdoor activities, such as camping or hiking. Unlike arachnophobia, though, the fear is less likely to be induced by simply looking at the picture of a snake. Number three on our list tonight is acrophobia, the fear of heights. This only affects 5% of people in the United States. 
People with acrophobia will commonly have symptoms of spinning known as vertigo in response to situations where they perceive that they are high off the ground. In response to heights, they also may freeze in place and are unable to move from the spot. In most cases, the feeling of anxiety is relieved when the person returns to ground level. People with acrophobia will often avoid situations involving heights. The severity of this phobia can vary greatly. In some people, the fear will arise from standing atop a tall building, while others can even have it induced by scaling a ladder. This phobia stems from the person losing confidence in their ability to stay balanced or fearing that they may fall. Number four, aerophobia, the fear of flying. People with aerophobia may become extremely anxious when flying. For some reason, it is brought on by simply entering the plane or even the thought of entering a plane. Whereabouts, others experience the phobia when turbulence is involved during a flight. People with aerophobia will avoid flying if they can. If it is absolutely necessary, some may endure it, but with great anguish, while others may simply choose not to go anywhere that would require them to fly. People with aerophobia may become anxious and dreadful in the days leading up to the trip, to the point where it could interfere with their work or social life. This phobia tends to stem from the fear that the airplane will crash. It can also be a combination of other phobias that accumulate in the environment of an airplane, such as fear of confined spaces, heights, no escape, or even an outbreak of illness. Finally, dear patients, we arrive at number five, the fear of dogs known as sinophobia. This affects 13% of the United States. Sinophobia is the fear of dogs. People with sinophobia will commonly freeze at the sight of a dog and may have intense symptoms of anxiety. People with sinophobia may avoid situations where they may encounter a dog, which can be difficult given their abundance as pets in society. They may find it difficult to interact with others who have dogs, including friends or even family members. They may even go as far as to avoid becoming friends with a dog owner. This fear usually arises from a negative experience with dogs, many times as a child. The person may have had an interaction with an aggressive dog at some point, or they may have even witnessed a family member being bitten or chased by a dog. This fear can also develop indirectly by observing a family member who has sinophobia. Well, dear patients, that is five phobias. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for listening. We're going to keep continuing these. And like I said, some of them are going to get even more obscure. So if you have any of these phobias, please put them down in the comments below. Don't spoil it for me to let me know which ones you have unless I've talked about them in this specific video. I don't want to have to put any more nightmares in your head than what I already do. So like I always say in closing, check under your bed, look in your closet, and sleep with the light on. The life you save may very well be your own. Good night, everyone.